Dear viewers, this repair video from the Vince Electric Laboratory is about to begin. Enjoy! Greetings and welcome to the Vince Electric Laboratory. Tonight, as you've probably seen in the title and in the pre-intro thing, uh, we're going to be repairing some commercial audio system today, uh, to be more exact, an InterM ACR120M, uh, which is a uh, CD player, MP3 player, radio tuner, and PA amplifier in one device. I was given this thing, uh, which, came, uh, which came from uh, a small dollar store. There's a couple of problems with this unit, um, which are not that obvious. Uh, well, first of all, the radio tuner doesn't work at all. So, you can hear a little bit of noise, but I can, it is impossible to tune. So the up button is uh, pretty beaten up, but I can't, I can't tune the channels at all. Right now it is a, it is a, at uh, 1720 probably kilohertz an AM. Uh, yeah, looks like it. It's on 1720 kilohertz AM, and I can't go down at all. And this is the very high, the very high end of the uh, AM spectrum. This is the first problem. Second problem. Um, the CD tuner, the, the CD tuner, the CD player works, but it works pretty badly. I mean, there's uh, some kind of noise that is uh, being outputted to the speakers. Let me show you with uh, a random CD that I took from my uh, pile of CDs. I took one that would not uh, would not cause any major copyright issues. So. Um, all the microphones are down, the CD is at mid-level. I, I want you to listen to the speaker output as I put the CD in. Did you hear that? This sounds to me like um, some kind of DC motor noise that for some reason um, probably originates from the CD player itself and is being outputted to the, um, the, C, the, the speakers themselves, which is rather weird. Now, if I push play, again, have a listen. Uh, where is it? Again, more motor noise. And this is some random humor CD, François Pérus. Uh. <laughs> You've heard what's going on. So the radio doesn't work at all. The CD does kind of work, although with a bunch of noise that's not supposed to be there. Um, with that being said, I'm going to disconnect this, the speakers turn it off and going to open the cover to take a look inside. And by the way, I do have the repair manual for this baby. Okay. Oh la la. <laughs> okay, I can see a few basic modules. First of all, uh, one of these two transformers is obviously the uh, speaker output transformers because this unit, since it is a commercial unit, it uses uh, constant voltage speaker circuits and not constant impedance. So for example, this can, uh, this can uh, be used with 25 volt and 70 volt operation, which is a constant voltage throughout all, throughout all the, the speaker circuit. Uh, compared to the more more from the smaller systems used in homes and uh, smaller, I would say, consumer grade systems, which use a specific speaker impedance, 4 ohm, 6 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm, 32 ohm even. This thing can do both. Uh, there are a, there's a um, constant voltage output, which can be switched 
to 25 or 70 volt and there's a uh, 4 ohm output I think. I'm going to take care of the radio tuner because it doesn't work at all. Uh, the other thing is probably more some sort of uh, signal processing problem. There's a flat connector connecting this board to this module here which is most definitely some sort of uh, demodulator. Oh, I think the uh, flex cable wasn't seated properly. I think we're going to uh, take a look at the service manual for a bit and come back with um, some sort of um, some sort of path to follow in this uh, troubleshooting adventure. Hey, have a listen! It works! I'm not exactly sure what I did, but it works! And what baffled me for a while is that this this tune doesn't output any white noise when it doesn't have when it doesn't tune a channel. Just let me show you. See, it just cuts entirely, which is kind of a, a nice feature, but it's kind of baffling when you're not used to it. Now I'm gonna go to one seven point one. Yeah. And just for the heck of it, let's do the chime. That works just good. Perfect. Even without the antenna, it kind of works, but with this very elaborate uh, antenna. LOL! I don't even touch it, and just bringing the antenna near the output, the input, makes the sound clearer. Now, what you are hearing is a local radio station, by the way. Now, uh, before reassembling the radio tuner, I just found out that uh, there's a pair of incandescent, believe it or not, incandescent lamps that are used as a backlight for the radio tuner display. Now, with no big surprise, both of these lamps are burned out. So, of course, I just desoldered them. And since I want a durable solution, I'm probably going to go with um, some LEDs. And I have a bunch in stock. Um, now, I would have liked to place blue LEDs, because these are rather cool. Oh, wait a second. I might be able to put some in them. Hey, this is gonna work. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put blue LEDs in there because these are absolutely cool. And there's one limiting resistor on another board that uh, limits the 18 volts to a safer value for the lamps. Of course, this would burn the LEDs in no time, almost instantly. So I'm going to take care of this particular uh, resistor. I'm gonna replace it with, with a uh, higher value resistor. I'm gonna find a way to fit an LED, a blue LED in there because these are, these are, oops, these are just so cool. It's gonna make for a very nice blue display. Oh well. Let me just uh, figure it out and I'll be back with the LEDs installed. There are new resistor installed and the whole radio and the whole assembly reassembled and working. All right, so the radio tuner is fixed and operating again. As I mentioned before, uh, the backlight wasn't working. It had a pair of incandescent lamps which were broken. Uh, they were burned out, basically. I've replaced them with a pair of blue LEDs. I really like blue LEDs for uh, displays like that. Um, I've also replaced a resistor on the main tuner board. Uh, it was a uh, 4.7 ohm resistor, like this one. 
well, it's, it's, this, it's this exact one, actually, a 4.7 ohm resistor, which was the current limiting resistor for the original incandescent lamps. I've replaced them by a 560 ohm uh, half watt resistor. Um, the LED current total is uh, 18.75 amps, milliamps, amps. It's 18.75 milliamps, which this, these are my calculations actually, uh, for two. They, they looked a bit bright, but um, maybe they are a, bit, a little bit overdriven. But 18.75 milliamps for two LEDs is actually not that much. So, um, well, I decided to... Because uh, at some point I wanted to uh, replace it by a, a slightly higher value resistor. And, and um, well, finally I decided to uh, simply let the uh, 560 ohm in there. And if they fail, well, I'm just going to uh, install a higher res value resistor and replace the LEDs. It's not that big of a job anyway but uh, yeah the um, the radio tuner works perfectly now and uh, if we change channels let's go on uh, one three one through point seven because uh, you can also do a scan just maintain the down or up button a little bit and it's going to scan, it's going to stop at the next uh, station we'll find. There you go. So we have the master volume and the uh, tuner volume. And hey, just for the heck of it. <laughs> That's just funny. The joys of public address systems. So I'm going to close this video with this. Um, so this was part one. In part two of this video, we're going to take care of the uh, CD player, which, as I explained in the beginning of this video, sends um, unwanted noise in the speaker output. So this is going to be part two of this repair video. And uh, of course, as always, stay tuned. And uh, I'll see you next time in the next video from the Vincent Electric Laboratory.